looking around at reviews of Mojo Mania on YouTube, pretty much everyone's saying that it's the best scenario that's out there, right? Uh, you know, they, there's so much to it. The campaign's really great. All this stuff is great. And I am here to confirm that for sure it's in the top five. Top five scenarios for Marvel Champions. No, it, it, it's pretty darn good. Um, but today we are going to do a quick overview slash review of Mojo Mania and some of my thoughts on it. So looking at the uh, different cards, it's the scenario pack for Mojo Mania has basically three villains in it, right? Uh, which makes it pretty good. It makes a pretty good value right there. Basically uh, a little bit better than Green Goblin, which had two, right? Risky Business and Mugen Formula. Wrecking Crew had one. The Hood... Uh, had one, but all the modular stuff. Oops, there's the hood. And then Kang basically had one. So it's a, uh, right off the bat, really good value that it has. Magog uh, is the first villain that you'll kind of face in it. And I really like his his style, right? Basically, um, after he attacks and damages a character, you place a ratings counter on the champion. When he would be defeated, you place three ratings counters on the challenge challenger. Uh, for example, the main scheme, when it resolves, or when it, when it finishes, right? When you get six on there for each player. Uh, you remove and place two rating counters on the champion. So what are these rating counters you might be asking yourself? Well, basically, it's going to be two different environments out on the table, right? One is the champion environment. And if there are at least five per person rating counters here, flip this environment. Then after you flip it, um, each player draws a card. And then when there is 10 ratings counters on there, uh, you lose the game, right? You lose the game. That's how you lose. And for the challengers, right? It's the same exact setup, basically. If there are at least five rating counter on your side, you flip your environment. And then after you flip it, um, you look for a surprise contender who comes in and, and kind of messes things up, but it's kind of nice when he gets in there. And then if there are at least 10 ratings counters here, you win the game. And beating him and, um, you know, the main scheme advancing and him attacking aren't the only ways the counters go on. For example, as we alluded to, the surprise contender who's a pretty beefy boy. Uh, when you defeat him, he will place two ratings counters per person on the challengers. Uh, but after he attacks and damages, you place a ratings counter on the champion. That's on top of the one that Gog does. Now, in order to set him up, you also uh, pick one random modular set. And we have to talk a little bit about the modular sets because they're really interesting, right? It's all TV themed. So uh, right off the bat, you know, you have the crime, uh, fantasy, and has the whole Game of Thrones thing, which is pretty funny. Uh, horror, sci-fi, sitcom, and Western. Now, what's fun is when you go through the actual like um, scenario campaign of all this stuff, it's pretty interesting because the the villain um or I'm sorry each each scenario will like remove one of the things right when you go through through it as a campaign. So it's really cool. So you actually get all the different um like sitcom, western, all all the different themes throughout the entire scenario. Like I, I thought it was a pretty cool way that they did it. I thought it was pretty interesting. So uh I was a big fan of that. Um and, and I won't go into the campaign too much because I only did it a handful of times, but um, I thought that was a really cool way that they that they did that. So, with that being said, um, let's get into Spiral, who is the second victim that you will do. And Spiral is pretty interesting in how she works because there's an escaped side of her, and then there is a uh, cornered side of her. And the escape side, she cannot take damage or be stunned. Threat cannot be removed from the main scheme, and when Spiral would attack, she schemes instead. Pretty interesting, right? So what does scheming do? Well, obviously, what if you get too much on? It's it's it's, it's no good. You, you, you lose. It's a, it's a way for her to, like, beat you. <laughs> um, so now when she corners, if there are at least three teleport counters here, remove them all and flip spiral. After spiral activates, place one teleport counter here. So assuming there's none on, you get three activations before she runs away in hiding. So the way that she works is that you uh, uh, put search the spiral side scheme to play and one random show environment into play and then shuffle each other show environment. There's going to be a total of um, three of them and or at least three um, and then shuffle each other show environment, blah, blah. Um, and with the corner treachery, right? So there's going to be um, a few cards in there as well. So let's see. Oh, that's not the one I'm looking for. Where? Oh, there it is. Um, so here's the search for spiral. Right, it's a permanent side scheme. After the last threat is removed from here, the player who removed that threat reveals the top card of the show deck and places three threat here. Right, So that's kind of how you cycle through the show cards that are off to the side. I'll give you an example of what one looks like in a quick second. Uh, let's look at the Game of Thrones one. Each player gets one hand size, right? But uh, there's a there's a Amplify? 
So let's go with the boost icon. There's a boost icon on everything, which, you know, hurts you in the long run. And discard each other setting environment in play when it gets revealed. If this card was revealed from the encounter deck, it gains surge. Um, so that's an important note because there will be some in the encounter deck as well. But it's pretty interesting because you have to be able to, to scheme well right? When, when you're playing with her or, or playing against her, you have to be able to scheme well. And then you have to also be able to quickly attack, right? It's like this weird balancing act you have to do. And personally for me, Spiral was kind of the, the most interesting villain of all of them. I, I liked all of them, but I thought Spiral was the most interesting in the way that she worked. And I think for me, um, when I play a lot more games in the future, it's, it's going to be mostly with Spiral. I, I I think she, because you have to be able to scheme some, not a ton, but scum, some, and the main scheme is really high, but, you know, she can put a lot of threat on, so you have to kind of scheme quickly. And then once you do flip her, you have to be ready to attack and, like, attack fast. I think that's a pretty interesting way that they're doing things. So, anyway, um, really like her. Really, really thought she was interesting. She's probably my favorite out of all of them. And then finally is Mojo. Now, Mojo... I'll be honest, I had higher expectations for Mojo. It's not that he's bad or anything like that. Um, I, I, I just, I guess I expected more. So the way he's trying to generally beat you is through scheming. So uh, his two scheme, one attack, and then a three, and then a, or a three, one, and then a four, two, right? So after your turn ends, discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. Place one threat on your hero for each card discarded this way. Uh, that does not belong to him, the Mojo encounter set. So obviously you can see that he is trying to get through his encounter deck as fast as possible. Now this adds on an acceleration token, right? That, that's, that's no good. But the way this set works is you choose one modular set plus one additional modular, one additional modular set from the Mojo Mania scenario pack and put and set them aside. Put the wheel genre uh, in the play on the spinning side. So after there are no... After, I'm sorry, after the encounter deck resets, and if there are no set aside module encounter sets, you lose the game, right? So this is why he's trying to go through his cards so fast, um, because if he goes through it twice, essentially, for solo, right? I believe it's twice. Um, you lose the game. You can just lose that way, um, which is a pretty interesting different mechanic and then uh if there was something put aside you'll put that in at the end of the step three villain phase deal encounter cards randomly choose one set aside module set and reveal its show environment uh shuffling the rest of the module set and placing it on top of the face or uh, placing it on, placing it on the on top of the encounter deck geez and deal the first player two face down encounter cards flip this card so right it's pretty bad when this happens too um but that's what he's he's kind of doing right he's running through his deck and one of the interesting things is his main scheme is a 25, right? Starts with 10, it's 25. I uh, want to reveal, choose one set aside and counter set at random, reveal its show environment and shuffle its remaining cards into the counter deck. Um, and then when a character flips or leaves play, move all threat from that character to this scheme. And, and this was a really interesting mechanic because there are cards there that, um, for example, supporting actor, right? After supporting actor activates against you, place two threat on him. So after he leaves play, it would go to the main scheme, right? Paparazzi comes in with a hinder of 10 on this card. And choose to either exhaust a character you control or discard one card from your hand, remove two threat here, basically at the end of the turn, then you discard this and all the threat goes on the main scheme, right? It's a pretty interesting uh, way of doing things. Um, there are also other cards that put threat on you personally uh for example mojo 2 plays two threat on each friendly character so you just flip down the alter ego you're throwing threat onto the main scheme which is uh it's pretty interesting right it, it's an interesting way he works but i feel like because it is 25 and as a solo player you tend to flip down less that i never worried about this as much as possible i kind of just rushed mojo for the most part because his life on expert is high but on standard i mean we're talking about a 16 and an 18 which isn't that high considering now on expert is 25 that's much better much higher he's very hard expert he's very hard expert um but i felt like on standard i i didn't have to worry about the main scheme too much right and especially if i happen to not draw a paparazzi um like it was used as a boost icon or something it's even easier um paparazzi is kind of a uh uh a killer of a turn because you do have to focus on, on this so much. But if you don't draw this, right, it, it's not that bad, right? It's really not that bad. And I, to be honest, I, I think I expected a little bit more from Mojo. Now, that's not a knock against Mojo and saying he's a terrible villain. He's not. He's still a lot of fun. I enjoy playing him. But for me, he was the... 
the least interesting. They were all interesting, but he was probably the least interesting. I liked Spiral the most. I really like how she works. Uh, Magog, I, I, I really like that. It's just something different with the two environments. I think that's really cool. And then, um, yeah, Mojo, I, 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 I enjoyed him, right? He's fine. He's good. So as far as compared to the other stuff, um, if I was to do a quick ranking of them, I still think uh, the Wrecking Crew is worse or the worst. Um, now, it's not terrible, right? I know a lot of people take this to be like, oh, it's an absolute terrible snare. It's not terrible. It's just it would be the last thing I would get, right? Um, but it's fine for what it is. After that, I put Kang. I'm not a huge fan of Kang. I know a lot of people like Kang a lot. It, it's, it's okay for me. Then after that, I would do the Hood. I don't mind the hood, but the modular uh, encounter cards that come with it, I think are really valuable, um, especially if you play like your first 50 or 100 games, right? I, I think they're worth a lot. Um, so I like the hood for that. Then I would rank it Mojo Mania as number two. I like Mojo Mania, but it's probably a solid number two for me. And then my number one is still Green Goblin. I still like Green Goblin's design the most. I think Risky, risky Business is still a tough scenario. I know there's people out there that say like it's super easy nowadays. I don't I don't think it is. I think it's easier than Mugen formula, that's for sure. Uh, but I don't think it's a super easy um, you know, scenario or anything. But I still really enjoy Mugen formula. I enjoy risky business. I think it's a lot of fun. So anyway, that is my review of uh Mojo Mania. It's good. It's good. I think it's the number two scenario pack that's out there. And I, I really enjoyed it. I like that they did like a mini campaign. I think that's really fun and that's really cool. And I look forward to more scenario packs like this. It really, it really seems like with each scenario pack, they're just getting better and better overall, better and better. Um, and, and they're really just knocking these out of the park. So I always love these single scenario packs. I think they're cool. I think it's an amazing value. They basically get three full encounters um, in this pack, which is awesome right i mean that's a lot of value there compared to the other ones so yeah i'm a huge fan um i definitely would recommend getting this pretty early not not necessarily early on but if you're buying a lot of marvel champion stuff this is one of the first scenario packs i recommend so anyway if you made it to the end of this video do me a huge favor make sure you scroll down hit the like button hit subscribe leave a comment let me know your thoughts about mojo mania and i will see you all next time